Aloha, my friends. And so this technique can actually change your life completely. It can free you of any past things that are holding you back and allow you to experience actual freedom in your life and move in a vi higher vibration than you ever have before that you may not even be aware that these things are holding you back. These are energies that are keeping you stuck at a lower vibration. So to really move into a higher vibration, this technique will truly do that for you. And what this technique is called is called empty chair therapy. Now what this is, is you are actually setting up a chair to get closure from past experiences, from past abusers. Now we all have mother and father wounds, even if they were the best of parents in the entire world and they took very good care of you, there is still some aspect of trauma or habits they've laid on us. And if it wasn't from them, you know, there might be people in your life that really hurt you, like an ex or a friend that betrayed you or a friend that let you down or, you know, something that didn't serve you in your life or like a boss or an abuser. Now, that doesn't always mean you're a physical abuser, but you could have had someone that emotionally abused you or mentally abused you or even spiritually abused you, which is a concept of leaning into, you know, not allowing you to actually express your beliefs. Or even when somebody is telling you, well, you're low vibration, you need to go do self work because you're low vibration. That's actually spiritual abuse. And so this concept of, or you know, someone's like, well, I'm such a high vibration that I'm a higher vibration than you. And so if you want to be like me, you got to do these things. There's also spiritual abuse and mental abuse. Now it might just sound like some words are being thrown around, but depending on your connection to that person, it can make a big difference. Or if you're really looking up to that person, it can make a difference and like how that feels. Or if they're like a really good friend, you know, so that's an example of spiritual abuse. Now I'm using this as an example that we all go through moments in our lives or things that we might have regret around or things that we wish we would have said or that we wish would have gone differently or people that have moved out of our lives so that we can't really get closure from. Maybe they've passed on to the other side and we can't reach out to them to try to get closure from them. Or maybe they've moved across the country or it's actually wouldn't serve to reach out to this person, to have this conversation with them. And so the empty chair technique is sitting up an empty chair and you're bringing forth the energy of that person to communicate with them, to talk with them, to actually say the things that you didn't want to say, the things that you've always wanted to say. Now, so, so as an example, for myself like this, you know, it's like I do have some mother and father wounds and a lot of suppression went on and I, was in a home that did involve a lot of abuse. Um, now, in this current stage and, and time, you know, my parents, they're, they're in their 70s, you know, and they're not always fully aware of everything that went on back in that day, and then nor do they think that what they did was wrong sometimes, and that it would actually be such a longer, harder process to get them to admit that the way they raised us was wrong, or that what they did caused emotional abuse or caused mental abuse. Now the physical abuse stuff, I know that right away that like my father feels bad for that and that has apologized for that, you know, and has, we, we, we've worked with that energy out to a degree, you know, in the sense of that he apologized. Now of course when he apologized, I was a late teen, early 20s, and it didn't have as much effect on me until I dived into personal work later on. And so it's like, I can't go back to him and rehash that and be like, hey, I know you already apologized for this, but actually these are the things I want to say to you. Because he's a 70 year old man and he's doing the best he can and he's he, he's getting older. And it's not that I, like, I don't want to heal this, but it's like if going and talking to somebody about the issue and moving into the energy that would heal it would cause more damage in the relationship you have with them or cause more trauma on yourself. So this is people that it's like, if you were to approach them, you would cause more damage onto yourself or more damage in a relationship you're trying to build with them or you wouldn't actually get the closure because it would move into an argument. It would move into a denial. 
it would move, it would never actually get closure and close off the energy. So you can move past that pattern and story. And so you can actually move into a more free or higher state and not hold these resentments or need for forgiveness or even sometimes it's just things that need to be said. Like if it's an ex that broke your heart and left and you didn't get to say all the things you wanted to say and it's been five years or two years or one year or you know a decade and it's like really do I really need to like reach out to them and like rehash this and bring it up and be like hey you know when you left this really sucked and blah 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 because then you're actually in some ways rehashing a wound that isn't their wound it's your wound not theirs and you're projecting energy onto them of going hey you did this and so you were wrong and this hurt me blah 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 and of course they're going to get defensive and come back or maybe they don't get defensive and they just absorb it and go yeah i'm just a shitty person you're right i'm a shitty person and then they just go into that of their own look so the purpose of this technique is to for yourself it's not about the other person it's never really about the other person anyways in life but for this technique specifically it's not about the other person it's not about them and, and moving and making them emit guilt or anything like that. It's moving the energy within you that is actually blocked. Whether you're aware of it or not, you know, it's there. And you can probably think of some times of people you're like, man, I wish I would have said this. Or you know what? This person really hurt me in my life. They really offended me and I would like to tell them off. Or you know what? I'm still holding this anger and I need to do something about it. Or you may not be aware of it at all, but the way you're showing up in your patterns, the way that you're acting is from that pain, is from that way that they treated you. As an example, using my father as an example again, like for a very long time, there were not male figures that were older than me that I could actually respect or give trust to, you know? Like there were a couple they would come around and I was like, oh man, they're so amazing. And so two things would happen. Either I would give them too much credit and almost place them on a pedestal, or I'd be like, well, yeah, they're really cool. And sure, he's a he's a billionaire and he's really great at business and he can teach me a lot of things, but he's probably got some skeletons in the closet. You know what? I'll take what I can learn from him, what I can use, but and, and even though he's super nice and kind and making a difference in the world, I'm sure that there there are some things there that like, you know, wouldn't want to get on his bad side or, you know, maybe there's a reason he's single, you know, and, you know, he's 50 something years old and single, you know, and I would always create this story that would justify me to engage with them and have an okay time, but never be able to actually have a deep connection with them. Never be able to actually have like a deep friend connection with a male that was older than me or even have a mentorship with a male that was older than me until I healed this. And then as soon as I healed this, I actually had a mentor approach me. It was my first shamanic teacher and we became very close and he became a true mentor to me and a true teacher. Not only was he like one of my best friends, but he was also a very powerful teacher for me and a true mentor. And at the same time, after I healed this, then I started having guy friends that were like not just like my age guy friends but guy friends that were older than me like my two best friends are one of them is 10 years older than me the other one is 20 years older than me and I do have friends that are my age that I connect with and bond with and, you know but until this point I didn't actually have friends in that facility not facility um, you know faculty I had female friends and if I did have guy friends they were the kind of guy friends it's like yeah we go out and we party we drink we shoot guns we do fun things but there were never anything below that surface level it's like yeah this is what we're doing we're having a good time what activity can we do there was never any deeper connection beyond that you know and if they were like oh I'm struggling with this like yeah I supported them but I never opened up about my own self and that was due to my own wounds with my father and so I'm using all of that as an example to show is like that could be something that's within you of like look at how you show up with males or females or how you treat your current relationship with someone or how what it is like for you on the dating scene or when you get a boss what's your energy towards a boss 
when you make a new friend, what's that energy? With your current friends, is it as deep as you want it to be or is it not? Like look at how you're showing up in your relationships as well as how you're talking to yourself, how you're treating yourself, how you show up in your day to day can all be attached to how these shown up. So for myself, until I healed that father wound, that that's, was a blockage. And then as soon as I healed it, it opened up a whole new door of possibilities, a whole new world of possibilities. I mean, literally my first shamanic teacher, my mentor, like saved my life in so many ways. Like I didn't have a lot of direction in my life at that current time. You know, I was a coach already and I was helping people and I was fine giving all this energy to other people and doing a look, you know, I'd done a good amount of self work, but I was fine giving energy to other people and like not really focusing on myself. And I was actually depressed. I was actually depressed and down in life. And I had a very short fuse temper. And I also had a very large ego that I thought I was the best of the best. And my clients, never got to see that side of me. They saw the face of, quote unquote, the best versions of me, of helping and assisting people. But anyone else in my life, like my wife or other friends I had, knew that I had a short temper and that I was a grumpy person, you know? And so by opening that up, like he saved my life, he saved my marriage, he helped me step into a truer, more better version of myself. But that never would have happened had I not done this technique. And so what this technique is, is you get out an empty chair and you are going to go through different people. And it doesn't matter how many people it takes, it doesn't matter how many it is, you know, you know what those energies are within you. And so what you do is that you'll meditate for five to 10 minutes and you bring forth an event, you bring forth a memory, or you bring forth this person in general into the chair. And it's without shame. You're not shaming yourself in any way. If a situation went down that you're not proud of how you showed up in it, you're not bringing that shame in with it. You're going to still bring it forth. And maybe you're apologizing to the person. You're saying, hey, I'm so sorry I showed up this way. I'm so sorry I achieved that. Or I'm so sorry that I did this and that. And it works that way too, where you can be apologizing or expressing. Or maybe you never got to share your side of something. And you're like, hey, yeah, I'm sorry that I got angry, or I'm sorry that I just ghosted you or stopped talking to you or cut you out of my life. And this is why I did that, because this person said this, and I felt this, and then because of the way I felt, I made some not so great decisions. That energy works too for this, as well as you get to say the things you want to say, of like, hey, it's not okay that you forced me to be a certain way. You know, using my examples of my, of my father as an example, you know, it's not okay that if I, you taught me that we're free to do whatever we want, that um, you know we have the freedom to choose in our life what we want, but if I didn't choose the way you want it, I was punished. And this is an example of some of the stuff I did or said, was like, how come we never had real heart to hearts? How come there were never questions of like, how did this happen? How come I was never believed when something went down? There were different instances that went down that were hard things happened and I was just assumed that I was out breaking curfew. You know, there's no way my tire actually went flat and I had to change it, you know. Um, or, you know, there's no way that, you know, there was actual traffic on the highway and that's why you're late for curfew, you know. There's no way that, you know, there was a fire at the mall that you can easily look up on TV and find out. Because then again, I also was in the days without smartphones, so there's a lot of things that couldn't be looked up. You know, so I'm going down a tangent here and I apologize. But pulling it back to this is that you set up the empty chair, you bring them the energy in, and you say the things that you never got to say, or that you want to say, whether that's you're apologizing for things, or you're yelling at them, or you're talking to them, or you're asking them the questions. And if you really meditate and quiet the mind before going into this, you spend five to 10 minutes just relaxing the body, bringing forth the energy, thinking about what you would want to say, when you ask them a question, you may even get answers back and begin to see things from their perspective as they ask that, as they, they bring that energy in. Or it may just be a soundboard that you are stating things to, you are saying things to, but you say what you would have said, you ask what you would have said, you apologize if you need to apologize, and this gives closure to the energy. 
ultimate closure to the energy that closes it off and allows you to move freely with more life. This frees up the mental realm so much. It frees up the emotional realm immensely. Because a lot of the times we've dealt with things mentally, but we think we've dealt with them mentally, but the emotional body hasn't. And so this allows us to step more into that emotional body and allow that emotional self to feel it. This allows that 20 year old version of you to feel it, or maybe that seven year old to feel it, or that 15 year old to feel it. And whether it's his mom or dad or an ex or a friend or a boss or an abuser or some other kind of relationship that didn't serve, you can do this for it. And you can do it with multiples of them and then begin to feel free. And this way you are taking it internally and you are shifting your subconscious so that you can then act from a new subconscious, from a new programming, and not have blockages. Because a lot of these blockages are similar to like eating away at the bandwidth, the bandwidth of your energy, the bandwidth of who you are, the bandwidth of your potential, you know? And by bandwidth, I mean it's like, if you're on a computer and you have a bunch of tabs open on the internet, you know, and you have like three things downloading and you're playing a game at the same time, and then you have a bunch of browser tabs open that you're trying to explore, you know, and that slows down the bandwidth, that slows down the RAM capacity of the computer, you know, and, and so then that slows down who you are and it becomes blocked, just even if it all gets put in the back burner, even if it's all in the back burner, it's just apps that are running in the background, programs that are running in the background, they affect how things are showing up in the conscious world, how you are showing up in the conscious world, how you are presenting yourself forward. So that is the way to shift on this, and that is the way to shift it, is by this empty chair technique and moving through it. So with that, if you have questions, reach out to me and we can dive into that more. Um, but I'll see you in the next video. Peace, love, namaste.